Hey there, Father Michael here. You know, I don't usually think of myself consciously as, as white or as uh, a white male of privilege. But there are occasions, a few times, where my whiteness, uh, I, I became painfully aware of it. It's weird because I don't get up in the morning and say, hello world from white Michael. I'm just, I'm just myself. I don't think of myself in that way. But there have been a few times when it's been obvious. So I'm thinking of a time uh, I, I drove down to New Orleans for my 30th birthday bash. And this is pre-cell phone era. Um, and I had like no gas in the tank and I'm lost in freaking rural Mississippi driving by myself on on red clay roads with no cash except for a bag of nickels and dimes and quarters that I had taken for the toll roads. Gives you an idea of how long ago that was and a credit card, of course. But I'm in the middle of God knows where and I finally find this gas station, uh, a one pump station uh, with an attendant uh, uh, shack and there's a group of black men out front playing checkers or cards I don't remember which and uh, I remember the pump on the gas pump was actually just a piece of green garden hose tied up with string and I had counted out my nickels and dimes and quarters and I had like three dollars <laughs> and so I asked for three dollars worth of gas because they also pumped the gas back in the day. And I was extremely feeling very vulnerable that I'm in the middle of nowhere, this white boy from Yankee territory lost in the Confederacy somewhere. That was one occasion. I remember stopping uh, one time in Milwaukee I was going to some kind of a dinner party or something and I thought, oh, I should get a, a bottle of wine. And I, and I stopped uh, at a liquor store. It was after dark and there was, you know, it was in a rather poor neighborhood and there was a thick uh, bulletproof glass between the checkout person, um, you know, and me. And I was the only white person in there. I was surrounded by mostly Hispanics. And of course, I'm dressed up quite a bit and I, I'm feeling again, very out of place, very, very much um, white, very much of the privileged class. Another time uh, happens every now and then when I'm talking with my friend, Michael, uh, in New York and he will give me some feedback on a Sunday sermon uh, from time to time and you know tell me what he thinks of it a and sometimes he will say regularly enough I'm surprised to hear a sermon like that coming from a white boy and then I'm like oh Oh, that's right. I I am a white boy. <laughs> so, so sometimes, sometimes I'm packaged uh, in ways that I can't control. I'm not even aware of, conscious of, in the you know, in the moment to moment living of it. And it's it's packaging <laughs> I really can't change, despite how often I might go to the tanning parlor. When I first started teaching, I had been told by my mentors many times that male teachers needed to wear a damn shirt and a tie every single day. 
to not only show the students that we, you know, that we were highly trained professionals, but also to keep ourselves on track, to remind ourselves of that very fact. I, at one time, I had a collection of ties probably valuing thousands of dollars. I have like one tie that I literally just bought because I got ordained and I just slap on the collar. That's my tie for, for you know, for most occasions now when I would need one. So there I am, a, a brand new teacher and you know, I had already had one career, so this is a second one that I was choosing, and I took that advice to heart. And I literally wore a dress shirt and a tie every damn day for five years, with the exception of an occasional casual Friday. And here's what I noticed about that. They were right about this. I noticed that I was much more focused and motivated and disciplined as a teacher when I wore the shirt and tie. And I remember giving feedback to the students themselves that they needed to dress to reflect not where they were, where they are in the present moment, but where they want to be in the future trying to encourage them to package themselves a little bit differently because, you know, sometimes we have a choice. We, we package ourselves in certain ways to communicate something to other people and to help keep ourselves on track. Whenever I make a hospital visit as a priest or as a pastor, I usually <clears throat> put on the uniform, the black suit, you know, uh, the black pants, the clerical collar, which is like the lingua franca, um, because believe it or not, people treat me differently when I am wearing the uniform of a priest. I get a lot more doors held open for me a lot more people call me sir <laughs> or father or pastor. Um, people feel free to tell me personal things about, you know, their life. Sometimes in the elevator, ride up, up or down the elevator in a hospital. So, so in some ways, wearing that collar, uh, it's a comfort. It's a comfort to those. For example, if I'm going into ICU, um, I've been asked by people I don't know to come to come and say a prayer with their mother or their husband or whatever, and I'm more than happy to do that. But by the same token, sometimes if I find myself wearing that clerical collar at, say, a social event or a wedding reception, especially when people have had a couple drinks, sometimes I get the weird looks um, strange looks, angry looks, sometimes. That happens quite a bit. And I've gotten into quite a few conversations with people, uh, you know, where they see the clerical collar and then suddenly they're not seeing me as an individual. They're expecting me to step up and defend the actions or shitty advice of every crappy priest and every rotten ass minister <laughs> who's ever pissed them off or let them down uh, or, or didn't give them what they wanted. God, I hate when that happens because I, I am the last one to step up to defend uh, some of my mostly brother uh, pastors who really have said and done some pretty unloving things. So sometimes we choose our packaging, like the clerical collar, we choose that packaging with one, one end in mind, but it has an unexpected impact on the people around us. One year when I was in my 20s, I got 
a gift basket of goodies, like little um, little crackers and um, little blocks of cheese and sausage and and weird little jams, right? It's the first time I ever had fig jam. Well, I also got this weird one called frog jam, all caps, F-R-O-G. It was like brown. I, I had no idea what it was, so that got put in the pantry for a long time, at least a year, maybe more, more like two years, perhaps. And then, as I'm cleaning out the cabinet, and I find this mystery jam of brown, uh, manure-colored something, I am ready to throw it out. But for just for the heck of it, I, I read the label, and I realize that the frog, frog stands for figs, rhubarb, oranges, and ginger. And I was like, well, I kind of like all those things. I'm gonna give this a try. It was fire. It was straight up fire. And I think I ate the whole jar like on two pieces of toast. So sometimes, sometimes we read the label or we, or we make assumptions about the label, the packaging, and we deprive ourselves of something really positive. So, I'm thinking about packaging today. What else might I have missed in this life by, by making assumptions about the way people are packaged, about their personal grooming habits, or the fact maybe that the guy down the street still wears a mullet? What am, I, what am I making assumptions about? How am I dismissing people based on their packaging, maybe the clothing that they wear, whether it's old and worn or whether it's perhaps all designer labels? When have I fallen into the trap of completely judging someone based on the packaging of their driving, for example, which is one of my pitfalls for sure. It's a real easy thing to do, to judge the packaging of someone when they're having a bad day and, and they're rude to us at the gas pump or, or, or they don't have the same level of education that we do or they're of a different religion or cultural experience or, or their politics is different from our own. In 1 Samuel 16, the verse says, the Lord said to Samuel, the Lord does not look at things the way you ratchet ass human beings look at things. Because y'all be looking at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart of the matter. In other words, God can look beyond the exterior packaging. So today, let's just think about our interactions with other people. Just for today. Just for today, let's try to look beyond the packaging and, you know, remembering that sometimes packaging like race and ethnicity, those things, we can't escape that packaging. Sometimes we do have a choice, but sometimes we're limited by our socioeconomic status and we don't have all the choices. Sometimes, Perhaps the people we encounter are trying to communicate something with their chosen packaging, if it is chosen, but maybe we're interpreting it the wrong way. Like people get 
a little feisty when they see me in my cleric sometimes, especially after a couple beers. Let's take a breath today and decide to look at the ingredients that God sees, kind of like that weird jam. I think this could be a better day if every one of us could just put aside the judgment of the exterior packaging of others. Pray with me. Living, loving God, you have given every one of us a cultural, racial, family context that we cannot avoid. Help us today to be mindful of the way we package ourselves. If we have been a little rough around the edges and a little quick to judge and a little rapid in the way that we criticize others, help us today to be a little bit more kind, to be willing to look beyond the external appearances of others. For those that we encounter who struggle, who are just trying to make it through this day without completely breaking down and losing their shit because they're overwhelmed by the circumstances of their life. Help us to be your gentle presence of acceptance and non-judgment. And help us to remember most of all, that sometimes the sweetest discoveries come wrapped up in very unappealing packages. For all the times that your grace has overcome our narrow-mindedness, we thank you. Amen. Make this day a great day.